spilled my coffee. That's why we have black tablecloths. No use crying over spilled coffee. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I wanted to start off talking about mass. So you've heard me talk about mass as a colorway before and that origin, which came from the Maritime Assault Suit. So Kokatat is a company that makes a lot of kayaking things, um, both in terms of clothing and apparel, but also kayaking accessories and things like that. So they make a lot of, I wouldn't necessarily call them dry suits, these are more of like a splash suit, but this kind of suit and colorway was contracted by Naval Special Warfare a long time ago, and that's, the, that's where the MAS comes from. So it stands for Maritime Assault Suit. So they worked with Kokatat to develop this, and through this color, they, they started to realize that it was great for a maritime colorway. So this MAS color started becoming kind of ubiquitous with certain things like gear and uniforms. So this is from a company called Blue Water Defense that had a contract to do uniforms. Uh, LBT did some stuff out of the mask colorway, so they started using nylon in the mask colorway. Um, and then, fast forward to today, I love the colorway. I've touted its benefits not only in a kind of a nighttime uh, outdoor environment, um, but otherwise I really feel it's a good color and it does differ quite a bit from like a ranger green. So while this may look ranger green on the surface, when you actually hold Ranger Green up to it, uh, you can see the, the difference between it. So there is a slight color shift between Ranger Green. I think it's great for an urban environment. There's, there's lots of benefits in it. And today, I'm happy to announce a collaboration we did called The Mass, which our acronym stands for Modern Action Sweater. So we did this collaboration with Millspec Monkey. This is kind of the general hoodie that you're used to seeing. We're calling it a Modern Action Sweater though, but there's our little nice made in the US collaboration label with Millspec Monkey. So these are kind of your traditional zip up front hoodie. Um, we color matched everything, not only the zipper, but the hoodie string as best we could. Uh, it's got thumb holes in each sleeve and they're reinforced. It's got a double napped interior. So it's super soft on the inside. It's obviously hard to feel things on camera, but Super soft interior. I really like the comfort level of this hoodie and I'm pleasantly surprised by it. Um, I was not expecting it to be that comfortable. And the hood, there's not much different than uh, a traditional hood, but it is a double layer hood, which some people like uh, more. And it's got a small stitch here, so it kind of holds in the uh, drawstring. You can always remove it if you want to. I remove a lot of drawstrings in my hoodies too, but um, I really like the, the way that it came out. It's got a, it's double napped, which I think I mentioned. It's got some spandex, I forget the percentage, I'll put it in the product details for sure, but got some spandex in the sleeve and the bottom here on the adjustment. Uh, kangaroo pocket, obviously just like a traditional hoodie, but um, it's split by the zipper, so you've got two individual hand pockets on this. And then as far as fit goes, did I mention it's made in the US? It's made in the US. So as far as fit goes, this is a medium. So I am five, nine and a half, the half matters, so I'm gonna say that. Um, so if you want a athletic fit, that's what you're gonna get if you buy it true to size. So I typically do wear a medium in hoodies. Sometimes I, I go for a large depending on the hoodie. So if you want a more athletic fit, this is a medium. This is what you'll get if you order true to size. If you want a looser fit, order a size up. So. A looser fit on me would be a large and I might get that in this case, but here's the thumb holes. So those are stitched, reinforced, thumb holes, hoodie, zip up. So if you're looking at picking up one of our ITS Modern Action sweaters, you can check them out this week. They are launching on Friday. Uh, Life members, obviously you get a little early preview, but again, Modern Action sweater, made in the US, ITS, Millspec spec monkey collaboration. All right guys, the next thing I wanted to talk about is a new glove I got from Yates. So I picked these up. I bought these on the secondary market because they were brand new and I got a better price than they were online, but they're only 50 bucks. Yeah, I know I'm cheap. I try to save a little money, but you know, hey, you gotta get stuff for gear testing, right? So these are the 925 gloves from Yates. These are not only fast rope gloves, but they also market them as repelling gloves too. And what I was looking for 
is I've had these Blackhawk Hellstorm uh, fast rope gloves forever. And one of my issues with them is that I bought them a size up whenever I first bought them a long time ago um, because I wanted something that was going to be more heat resistant for repelling. And I, I like the option of fast rope gloves because they were thicker, so especially in the palms. And these have lasted pretty well. I mean, you can see there's definitely some wear and I've, I've gotten a lot of use out of them repelling. But one of the things that I wanted to fix is that they're too big. So I bought them because I thought at the time I was going to have kind of these were going to be an over glove and really they wound up just being my repelling gloves and I didn't use them as an, as an over glove. So I started looking around and I came across these Yates 925 gloves and they do fit pretty true to size. So they are more of a, a fast rope glove so they have this reinforced area here in the palm um, that kind of fits over the, the fingers but there's still a lot of dexterity in this. Um, so I dropped that, but um, there's still quite a bit of dexterity you have in the fingers. And I particularly like the, the way that they s sewed in uh, grommet holes into the gloves themselves. So these Blackhawk gloves have little loops and there's always kind of a problem sometimes when I, when I mess with these and try to put them back on a belt after repelling. Because I'm usually wearing a carabiner back here when I'm repelling and I'm trying to do kind of a no look pass type thing and hang them back on a carabiner that I have hanging off there. And I, use, I don't use a locking carabiner when I hang gloves because there's really no reason. So typically what would happen with these Blackhawk gloves is I would wind up kind of looping them through the, the straps, the little webbing straps that are here for adjustment. And I never found myself ever really pulling on this strap for adjustment. So I always felt this buckle and adjustment here on the, on the wrist strap was just kind of a, uh, kind of useless. But I'm looking forward to using these. I haven't used them yet. I just got them in. But one thing I noticed in their description is that these are sewn with Kevlar fiber or Kevlar fabric. So um, the actual uh, thread that's in here is Kevlar, which is nice um, because it's heat resistant, obviously. And I was trying to remember whether these had it on the, the Blackhawk Hellstorm gloves, but um, I couldn't remember if they had it or not. But um, I was trying to look, and these are made in Pakistan. Some people um, like to know those kind of details. I know made in the U.S. is big for me, but I did want to try these out. Um, I'm kind of still on the fence of whether this extra padding over the fingers is going to be a hindrance um, or a help when repelling, because I do like having a thicker glove when I repel, and that's kind of why I wanted to pick these up in the first place. But, you know, I am looking forward to to running these 925 gloves from Yates and I will certainly report back with how they did. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. In case you haven't noticed, I'm drinking out of a new prototype gear tasting mug. We're still working on these, not released yet, but anyway, I thought I'd give it a shot with my coffee today in gear tasting. So, first question comes from R, R, over email. I need help in buying a handheld, either a CB or a Beofang in case of emergency. I need a system that can reach five miles, has a weather channel, and AM, FM. So, first of all, it's easy to hit a couple of those requirements, but not all of them. So it's a kind of a loaded requirements list. And that's, you know, not a fault of yours. It, I'm just going to try to explain it a little bit too. So when you buy a Beofang, you're getting an FM transceiver. So you have a uh, FM radio capabilities on this. I'm not sure if you're just wanting radio capabilities so you can tune into local radio stations in case there's an emergency alert. Uh, but they are capable of receiving the seven different frequencies for weather in the U.S. and Canada. So one of those will work the best within your general area, but having all of them available programmed into a radio would be a benefit if you were moving through different areas in the United States. That way you can try to tune into the specific one for the weather. So uh, both Beofangs and you know, the other one we recommend, which is Waxoon, both of which we've talked about before, and I will link below to the article on radio communication that is pretty extensive, so it'll teach you a lot of things like why the little handhelds that you see at the, at the Academy Sports and Outdoors that say they're 22 miles are really just a fib. So 
that that type of radio operates on the family radio service channel. There's there's some that will pick up other things uh, as well. Some communicate on mirrors. Um, that's another publicly accessible uh, band. But really, really, what's going to dictate the the distance that your transmission or your free or uh, your communication can travel, whether it's transmitting or receiving, is based on a couple of different things. One, you've got kind of a line of sight type thing, so you know, obviously obstructions are going to obstruct that, that communication from traveling too. And then you have a wattage in your radio. So with the power or wattage that's in a radio, that's how far the transmission can, you know, you can communicate on. So that's what's actually sending and receiving the, the uh, transmission. Um, and I think, I mean, I should know this from my ham test, but I, I'm pretty sure power doesn't really dictate what you're receiving, it's more what you're transmitting. It, I think I got that right. But anyway, we, uh, Rob and I both recently got our ham licenses and that's something I really recommend to you too. If you're interested in emergency communication, being able to not only receive but to transmit on the ham bands will allow you to hit repeaters and stuff which will drastically increase your distance and transmission. So if you're looking for distance, uh, I would really recommend uh, getting into ham radio. And, and also, one caveat I'll mention too, even if you don't have your ham license, if it's a true emergency like you're saying you need this purpose for, you can send a transmission on a, a ham radio frequency without having a license if it's a life and limb type situation. I mean, that was a question on our ham test. So um, it is possible. So don't feel that like there's no way you can even listen or talk on a ham frequency unless you have a license. You can listen all day long, but you can't transmit without that license unless it's an emergency life or limb type situation. So hopefully that gives you some information. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in your question was AM. These radios don't receive AM radio, uh, but that's you know one fallback of your requirements list. But you know I like having a weather channel and I always program it into my radios too. So I'll put like you know two or three of them that are more local to my area. Uh, but like I said, it's always a good idea to throw all seven in if you can program. And you will need a programming cable if you want to do that. And the program I'd recommend to do that is Chirp. It's a free application that you can use to program these radios. Really not hard. Thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember, if you have any questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on the social media network, and we will get your questions fielded right here on a future episode. If you like what we're doing, please consider checking out our Patreon channel, patreon.com slash ITS Tactical. If you head over there and support us, we have some different levels and breakdowns with goals of what we're trying to hit with your support, and it will allow us to give you something back in return. Thanks for watching.